Everybody enter the stars. Good evening. This could be one of the most amazing discoveries ever made. And I'm not saying that lightly. This puts a whole new different perspective on understanding about God, the universe, Christ. It basically proves the Bible. It proves all this ancient knowledge was encoded into the Bible waiting to be open in the last days. And I put this model together. We're going to do a quick recap. And then I'm going to show you how the angle of the eye matches the 23 degree tilt of the earth. That's the major discovery. Now I uploaded a documentary on this channel. I believe I, I uploaded it on that actually demonstrates to you all of the analogies of the inner eye and our universe. And we're, so we're going to do a quick recap on that. Make sure we're connected up here. I've got us plugged into the hardwire, so I think we're going to have better luck not getting kicked off this time. So we're kind of doing a test. Now, this, of course, is the inner eye. This is your eyeball, right? And apparently, from what we've discovered, putting all this together, the human eye seems to match the makeup of our universe. Now, this down here, of course, is the Earth. I've got a flat Earth model here. But the, the jury's still out on whether or not the Earth is a convex lens or perfectly flat. I've had people get really upset who are flat earthers. But what they don't understand is even if you believe the Earth is flat, the Earth has mountains. And who's to say that the mountains in the middle aren't higher than the mountains around the edge? That would be a convex lens Earth, right? Slightly curved, which is what I've always said. Even though... It is on a plane that could be relatively flat. Anyway, I don't want to get in discussions and arguments about the exact shape of the earth. We're not supposed to be fighting and hating each other over that. But the fact remains that the lens of the eye, which is right in this area here, I've got it covering the lens area of the eye, is roughly the same shape. Now, I think what we can all agree on is that the whole of Earth is on top of something. There is no underside of the Earth. That's my belief system. And we can, the flat earthers and I can agree on that. Now, here's what's more important now that we've got off that subject. You've got the white light coming in from the outside world being viewed in from the front of the eye here. This is what you're looking at down here is the front of the eye. In fact, maybe what we'll do is we'll rotate this. This might give you a better pers well, not so much, because then you lose your orientation. Now, the white light comes in, goes through the lens, through the earth, right? And you get what is called a chromatic aberration. This is a rainbow haloing effect due to the imperfections in, in the lens of the eye. Some people get this. You often find this in cheap cameras, cameras that don't have very good lenses in them will create this rainbow haloing effect around the image. This is called a chromatic aberration. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this. The reason why I'm live doing this is because uh, it's much easier for me to kind of slow down and explain things. A lot of people are a bit confused about the video, um, and I try to be as clear as possible. But as you know, oftentimes... They've conditioned all of us to have very, very short attention spans, to not want to slow down. And if we see information, we either immediately discredit it if in, unless we're entertained. OK, so these are the challenges of being a YouTuber. You could have the most amazing information. but If you don't present it in the right way, you're going to run into problems getting the word out. Now, this is probably some of the most important information that I've ever discovered on this channel. So I'm hoping it'll get picked up and people will search for it. This is a good example of a chromatic aberration. This is the regular lens image of it. And here's like with a cheap lens. And you see this around the outside edge, this haloing. It's basically the colors are shifting in the prism. Okay. Here's some more images. Chromatic aberrations. 
what they're called. Here's a really good image of it. This is the rainbowing effect around the image. That's what this is, okay? Now that we've established that, let's keep going with this. Because this is exactly where it would appear in your eye. They've got models showing where the aberration is. It exists around an axis of the eye. So now we have an earth, which represents a lens. We have a rainbow, which represents the chromatic aberration. So one by one, we're going through the different elements of what you would see inside the an actual eye, right? Okay, so, so far so good, right? Well, you're okay. So where does the galaxies and all this come from, Casey? Well, this is part of the floaters. You have floaters. This is all filled with fluid. It's called the vitreous humor. It's filled with this fluid inside your eye. And this fluid has floaters in it. They look like floating galaxies and planets and comets and solar systems. And so this is what you have. Now, the moon is represented by this blind, uh, this spot here. This is called the optic disc. And some people have a crescent optic disc. You can look that up. It's a real thing. You also have the light source, which is the sun. And that's also represented in here as the light as it comes through the eye it becomes like the sun. So one thing I want you to notice is chromatic aberration matches the same spectrum of the rainbow. Starts out with the reds, the oranges, goes into the yellows, the greens, and then finally the blues. It's in the same order. So you literally have a rainbow in your eye if you were to look at it at the right angle. Now this is where things get interesting. And this is why I wanted to have this video today. <clears throat> we're gonna cover this at the end, the hexagon of France. That's pretty crazy. Someone just turn me on to that. Make sure we're still connected up here. Everyone share this video, uh, thumbs it up. Let everybody know we're live tonight. I don't know where everyone's at tonight, but typical uh, for Saturday nights. People are off doing other things, and there's a lot of other live shows going on. So bless you guys for being here. This is the orbital axis. Yes, your eyes have an orbital axis. And what that is, is it's basically the opening the of your skull the orbit that's what your eyes are they're called the orbits right and when they measure this it's at a specific angle so this blue line represents the axis of your orbit the orbital axis okay i think i've got another image of it here okay this is your orbital axis so they call that here visual and orbital axis now, I'm establishing the orbital axis because your eyes are actually shifted, pointing forward, and they are off from the orbital axis by exactly 23 degrees. I pulled up multiple images here so you can understand. Here's the orbital axis, and believe it or not, the muscle plane, this is the muscle which is one of the four corners of the earth. Remember we talked about this? There's four muscles attached to the eye. That's another thing I forgot to mention here. There's four muscles that come off of this eye, which become the four corners of the earth. People are like, how can you have four corners around a, 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 a disc? Uh, well, your eye and your head has four corners around a disc. So there's the answer to that. Now, this is where things get interesting because the muscle plane aligns with the orbital axis. And, um, and then the eye pointing is off 23 degrees. So I'm showing you this here. I'm showing you this here, providing multiple references for your axis of your eye, your visual axis being off from the orbital axis by 23 degrees. Now, why does that matter? Well, I got news for you. The Earth is off by 23 degrees. Do you think that's an accident? Unless God was trying to tell us something, that the eye universe, the optiverse, is modeled after the human eye. Now, this tilt 
changes. It's actually a range. It's not exactly 23.5. It's between 22.1 and 24.5. So there's about a three, about a three, two to three to four degree um, range. Okay. So what is that about? Let me show you that. So here's our optic axis, the muscle plane, 23 degrees. And we're looking for a two to three degree, almost four degree range of the of the actual wobble. This is what two to four to three. This is actually a three degree angle. Let me blow this up. I'll be in the chat in a minute, you guys. I just want to get this dialed in for you. Now, when I when I discovered this information, I couldn't believe it. It was almost like I just knew it to be true. And when I started to dig, it was true. And this is how a lot of these discoveries happen. It's I don't know how to explain it, you guys. So what is this three degree spread? I just wanted to show you what a three degree look like. And I believe that is the difference between the visual axis and the optic axis. Remember, I showed you the difference between the optic axis and the, um, what was it called? I'm getting confused. And the, um, orbital axis, that's right. Now I'm showing you the difference between the optic axis and the visual axis, because you have a visual axis too. It lines up with your fovea in your eye. And that is off by three degrees. So there's your three degree tilt. Here's another image of it here. So this is your wobble, okay? So everything's included. Now, if you, if you have to, you'll have to go back and watch this video again, but it's pretty clear. There's no room for error with this. It is what it is. This is what I'm trying to present it to you in such a simple manner. How is this the case? How is your eye almost matching exactly the known universe, which is our, which is our earth, the tilt, the heavenly bodies above us being the floaters in your eyes. How is this lining up like this? This, this it ha definitely is not an accident. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. Let's see if you guys have any questions on this. Let's pop this chat out. Now, there's been a lot of drama going around in chats and stuff that have nothing to do with what's being presented. And um, so what I'd like to do is there's going to come a time where I may start shutting the chats down and just do presentations. And it's going to upset a lot of you, but I'm just kind of over it and it's distracting and it's causing lots and lots of problems in the truth community. And this is, you know, this information is so important. And then when drama starts happening, then what happens is all the focus goes off of the information and onto the drama. So I'm basically at this point, I have a no tolerance policy on this channel and, uh, you know, I'll actively be cleaning house, so to speak. So everyone be on your best behavior and let's stay focused on what we're looking at. Cause this is important stuff. Every time someone gets distracted off of this stuff, I mean, there are people out there that don't even believe in God. If they can come to a channel like this and see Christians, real Christians, not fighting with each other and looking at this amazing and compelling information, this could actually, you could actually put someone's salvation in jeopardy by coming up with drama and, and all that stuff. Because people are going to go, those people are crazy or they're going to get distracted off the topic. And I'm to the point now where I'm almost thinking that some of this is intentional. Or it's just being very immature. I mean, it's one of the two. So that's where we are with that. All right. So what else do we have here? Let's look in the chat here. All right. So 
we got that covered. I wanted to get that covered. We're not going to be on here long, you guys. Um, apparently, this is the newest news on uh, rights, right? Let's pull this up. Here's the news. Apparently, a judge upheld a ban in saying that basically these do not fall under the the second amendment and so this is huge because other states will follow suit they, they might even ban them uh, state by state that's gonna be a problem because basically what this does and i just wanted to mention this quickly i know the show's not about this but this basically can in this state this particular state massachusetts which has it banned uh will criminalize every single person who owns one of these. Now think about how sinister this is, okay? What they've done is they've basically, this is how the New World Order works. They've basically created a situation where they were profited off of the sale of all of these, right? They profited off of it. And then what they did they made millions and millions of dollars. Who knows? I mean, th these these are expensive items, okay? They're very expensive. And so they basically profited off of them several million dollars, multi-million dollar sales as the fear kept rising and rising and people were afraid that they were going to get banned. And people, I mean, the, the sales, if you look at uh, charts of sales of these things, it's through the roof. Um, more than any time in history. And now that all, as many people as they could bought them, now all of a sudden, state by state, they're going to go through and make them illegal. So what is that going to do? Well, what are these people going to do with these things? They just basically wasted a thousand bucks. Some of these are like a thousand, two thousand dollars. The price of a used car. It's unbelievable. And this is my problem with all this. This is why you know, people ask me, why don't you know, you know, you need money. Yeah, you need money, but you don't need a lot of money. OK. When you when you're sitting back and watching all this chaos going on, people purchasing two thousand dollar weapons and stuff like that. Um, basically. You are feeding into that, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying think of the disappointment on people's faces. In, in this state in particular, in Massachusetts, or other states who, who are going to follow suit, they're going to be basically sitting with this asset that is now worth almost nothing. Okay? Well, what are these people going to do? Guess what they're going to do? They're going to sell these things to criminals. Why not? You're going to get something for it. You can sell it on the black market. Yeah, you, you could become a felon by doing that. But if I had one of these... And all of a sudden, my state said, tomorrow it's going to be worth nothing. Guess what I'd do? I'd try to offload this thing as quickly as possible. Either that or I'd like, you know, everyone says they're going to fight. And they're not going to, you know, from my cold, dead hands. You guys, it's not going to happen. Okay. It requires people. You have to first organize that. The second you start organizing any kind of defense amongst you and your citizens about what you're going to do when they come for you, they're going to pick that up on the Internet. They're going to pick it up and the FBI is going to be at your house so fast you're not going to even know what to do before you can send a second email. They're going to and they're going to call it subversion. They're going to say this is the law and you're organizing against the federal government. And you're done. And they're going to round up you and all your friends before you can get a shot off. Trust me. We've experienced here on YouTube. Okay. If they can run algorithms and shut channels down for simply speaking the truth, do you think that they're not looking at your Facebook, looking at your Facebook groups? Oh, the militiamen. Okay. Facebook reads every single message you send. Text messages, you're texting each other trying to organize something. Okay, it ain't going to happen. Not in America, not today, not with the technology. And this is why I feel like they waited for all this to go down at this point. They, they waited till they had 
the technology in place. They waited till they had the NSA in place, okay, to monitor all this stuff. They waited till they had the algorithms to pick up chatter. And then all they got to do is make a law. And you, in breaking the law, you reveal yourself and expose yourself as a felon, which I'm telling you right now, most law-abiding citizens, as soon as they're under the threat of being a felon, they're going to cave. They're going to cave in. Trust me. They're not going to want to lose their kids, lose their job. This is how the matrix works. You really don't have a choice unless you make the small stands early. And no one made the small stands early. No one did it. And so now they're going to try. It's too late. You already missed your opportunity. And I'm not saying this because, because, you know, I'm criticizing anyone, but it's like how many times, even on this channel, other channels, we've been telling people, hey, now's the time to take a stand before you even needed to pick up a weapon. Take a stand. Take a st Nobody did. These laws kept getting passed. Obamacare, for instance, I told people, there's no way you can let this pass. Everybody needs to say no. And look, look at all the people that signed up for Obamacare. Willingly signed up for another tax to get mediocre health care, to go stand in a DMV line to get your health care, to have increased insurance. So if we couldn't even stand up to Obamacare, what makes us think we're going to stand up to this? It ain't going to happen, you guys. So this is the beginning of the end. This judge ruled. This is now a case precedent. They're saying these do not actually qualify for Second Amendment protection, which means that in their eyes, these are basically, you might as well be holding a gra uh, five grams of uranium. If you have one of these, you might as well be holding five grams of uranium or a nuke, a suitcase nuke, okay? Because it's going to be basically be the same thing. And if you've got one in your possession, this is where it's all headed, state by state. And, you know, the, the, the holdouts will keep moving from state to state where it's legal, you know, and everyone's going to end up in Texas or somewhere. <coughs> or Idaho, and they're going to say, oh, it's the last free state, and they're just going to slowly, like a boa constrictor, tighten up, tighten up, tighten up, and over the next 10 to 15 years, there's going to be none of these left, okay? And that, to me, is sad. It's unbelievable. I can't believe where we're at in this, in this world right now. So I wanted to talk to you about that. This is huge news. I'm sure other channels are covering it. Um, I'm sure like Blackstone Intelligence is probably going to be on this. If he doesn't know about it, you might want to let him know. He's always got good commentary. He helped me get my channel back, so forever uh, indebted to that guy. Uh, what else do we have here? So someone sent me, they're like, dude, you're in France? Well, you're in, you're in the hexagon. <laughs> I'm like, what? So I looked it up, and sure enough, France is called the hexagon. So I left the matrix, the beast, only to enter another beast matrix. You guys, it's all around us. Now, this is historical. It's not literally a hexagon, but basically the shape of France is like a hexagon. Now, many of you know the Illuminati came out of parts of France. They built a lot. A lot of these churches and cathedrals were built by the Knights Templar, who are basically the roots of the Illuminati. Okay, So this is what the, the truth about What's going on in France? Hexagon is a phrase designating the mainland of metropolitan France, recalling that its geographical form is part of an almost regular hexagon. Three terrestrial sides and three maritime sides. Isn't that interesting? So there's your 33 right there. And maybe that's why the Illuminati came out of here. Because the 33, right? Three on the, the sea and three on the land. I mean, this is shocking stuff. Origin of the expression. This, so this started back in the 1860s. Black hussars, whoever they are, represented France in hexagon. This ped pedagogical simplification on school maps 
being put forward by the reformers of the teaching of geography. Okay, so this is there, this is a translation from French. This is this is why while I'm reading it, it kind of sounds weird. The geographer da 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 favor the pentagon. Someone else says an octagon, but the hexagon shape is all the more necessary after the Franco-Prussian War of 1870, which sees the loss of, I guess, this region in France, which basically made it look like a hexagon. So this is relatively in recent history. This is right around the 1900s. Uh, so it says here, 1960s, the symbolic being all the more accentuated after the policy of spatial planning initiated by Charles de Gaulle. Okay, so Charles de Gaulle looked like he was kind of the catalyst in this, the shaping of France. Obviously, it's changed over the many wars and stuff like that. What else do they have here? That's about it. So this is a coin from Charles de Gaulle, and he's actually got... Oh, here you go. 1988. What? So this is a coin from 1988, and they show the hexagon on the coin. What does this say? Liberty, Egalite, Fraternity. Wow. So what else do they have in here? That's about it. I want to share this with you because that's bizarre. So now this this opens up a whole new dimension to my research. So we'll be definitely on this and see what else might fall in line with this. But expect that France is going to play a huge role in the end times. I mean, there's a reason that all this is happening. There's got to be. All right, guys, back in the chat. It's the Dilio, what are you guys up to? Crazy stuff. The cube. I'm just reading what you guys are talking about in here. Yeah, Italy's a boot. It's a silver lace. Yeah, 19 like Twin Towers on the bill, says Kelly. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand <clears throat> that the Twin Towers were basically two eight-sided objects. So the edges of the Twin Towers are beveled. This is where they get the 88. Let's pull this up. A lot of people don't know this. It's close to these windows. Okay, so check this out. People are like, why do they... Why do they shine 88 xenon lights every year on 9-11? Why do they do that? It's because these were two eight-sided things, objects, columns, whatever you may call it. So I'm going to try to find a picture of that. Gosh, the... They really do a good job scrubbing this stuff off the internet, don't they? People are like, why do they shine eight xenon lights? Here's why. Here's a good one. When you look at the actual shape, there's these little beveled edges on each of these towers, or there were before they fell. So there are eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's two of them, that's 88, right? The 88 number, as we explained to you guys, means time and space. So what you had was a signification of, you know, what is the end of time and space? Something changed on 9-11. And maybe they knew the end was coming. Nobody knows the day or the hour, but they know generally when it's gonna come. I believe this is some kind of ritual Oh, here's a better picture of it. Here you can see it much, much better. These are very pronounced. This was done on purpose. Beveling these edges was done on purpose. This is not typical building design. Okay? Think about this for a second. What does this really mean? 
okay, other than the fact that both of these buildings were aligned when they were built in 1973, they were aligned to 119 degrees. You can go and Google Earth and measure the angle at which these are aligned at 119 degrees. What's 119 backwards? 911. So they already knew what they were going to do before they did it. And the fact that this 88 thing, this is huge. Okay. It's crazy. You know, like there's a lot of YouTube channels out there. Okay. Talking about all the regular stuff there is to talk about, right? The headlines. But then when people find real information like this, it's like YouTube has these algorithms that basically do a really good job of silencing this stuff and putting it at the bottom, right? This channel has been plagued by this. Some of the most amazing discoveries have come off of this channel through all of you guys submitting information. One of them was that these footprints of the, the towers are aligned to 119 degrees. I couldn't believe it when I found it. I'm like, I, is that really 119? Is, is it 120? Is it 118? No, it's 119. It's real. And it seemed like every time we tried to talk about this live, um, the, the stream would cut out. And when we do videos on it, they'd sit at 500 views. I even made my banner on both my Facebook and my YouTube channel with 119 degrees on it. And every time we showed it, it was like nobody was listening. This is huge. It shows foreshadowing. Now, this 88 thing is weird because I believe that somehow the event of 2001 is going to tie in with the collapse of the dollar. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I'm on it. And we will get to the bottom of it eventually. <clears throat> because it's going to have something to do with the dates. And this might be a hindsight thing. You know, I'm not here to try to predict things or be some kind of a prophet. But the proximity of the event of 2001 to when the actual dollar collapses is going to be directly related. I will say that it's going to be directly related. We're going to look at the dates between the two events and there's going to be, it'll probably have 88s in it in the date. It'll be like 88,000 hours or 88,000 weeks or something weird like that. I can almost guarantee you that's going to be the case. Because the two events are going to be tied in together. They just are. Look, 119 watching. Unbelievable. See, that's the matrix, you guys. That's the matrix. Now, somebody told me they were locked out of my stream. That was that did not happen. I don't really block people unless I talk to them first, especially if it's someone I just helped. So that didn't happen. But, you know, YouTube likes to play games and create chaos on channels like this. So they'll just block people indiscriminately and then then people will think it's me and then what that does it creates dissent makes people upset it triggers people basically they're trying to just trigger as many people as they can through all their little antics and games okay and so all we can do is set the record straight and let everybody know what's going on and try to remain calm sometimes i just want to scream at the top of my lungs with this information it's unbelievable so, um, what else we got going on here? Yeah, they've been blocking a lot of you guys, you know, not sending out notifications for the streams. I kind of promoted this stream a bit. I went and put it on Facebook and I put it on Twitter and I put it on um, my blogger account, my blogger website. So hopefully everybody through the one of those three platforms got the notification. And that's about all I had for you guys tonight. Guess we can hang out a little bit. Um, so, what do you guys think about all this? Hey, we didn't get knocked off yet. This um, hardwire must be working pretty well. Mark, when he came, he installed a Ethernet cable, ran it through the bottom window from the. Um, from the internet, from the Wi-Fi, from downstairs, up through the top window. He did that for me. What an amazing friend. And we had to drill holes and everything. And so he ran this long cable. He's like, maybe this will help your live streams. So, hey, so far, so good, right?
So, um, Deb asked what was the beginning of the show topic. Well, in the very beginning, we covered the Optiverse, which is the I universe. And we showed how the angle, the tilt of the eye is actually the same as the tilt of the earth, which finally, basically, it's a slam dunk. It proves what we've been saying all along. And then we even showed the wobble because there's like a two to three degree wobble. So we showed that as well. So that's what's going on with that. The model makes things more complicated. How, how so? Actually, it simplifies things for me. I'm getting a lot of that too, like people saying the exact opposite of what the truth is. Um, and I'm not saying that that's what you're doing, some guy. I'm just saying that I'm seeing a pattern of this on my channel where I could show the most compelling information and like I'll get like five trolls that'll come in and say the exact opposite of what the truth is. And so, yeah, that's the PSYOP too. I don't know if those are robots or what. Yeah. But I appreciate all the people that come to the channel. I don't give you guys enough accolades and credit for those of you that are positive, awesome people who come on and comment almost every single day with positive stuff. That just is amazing. That's why I do this. And I don't tell you guys enough how much I appreciate you. Skip Knot says, are you censoring me into the stars? No. I have, um, since I don't have a lot of mods on my channel, especially on this main channel, uh, I just don't allow like bad language and stuff like that. So if you're putting bad language or links, those won't show up. So I do see what you're, you're saying here, Humboldt Broncos. Um, what is that? Well, if that's a, so you gotta tell me what that link is. I'm not just gonna let you pop links into my chat, okay? So tell me what the link is instead of just trying to put the link in there and then we might allow your link to come up. See, this is what I have to deal with, you guys. All right. Um, Wonder if there's a relationship between eye problems, far-sighted and near-sighted. Says big brothers, big sisters. Good question. Hmm. Well, I'm sh I'm sure if we look in the Bible, there's going to be analogies to that. You know, um, one analogy that's off the top of my head, which doesn't really have to do with near-sighted and far-sighted, is um, the beam and the pl the plank and the speck. Now, the plank and the speck, a very interesting uh, verse in the Bible, because it relates directly to the speck, which is the remnant. So let's pull this up here, show you what I'm talking about. Well, this is pretty fascinating. We've covered this on other videos, but I'm going to show this to you guys again here. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Let's use this picture. Okay. So this is the beam. And then the speck is inside the beam. What are you talking about, Casey? This is the hyaluronic canal. What happens is some people get floaters inside this canal. What is the hyaluronic canal? Well, there's an artery. Before you're born, there's an artery that connects your lens to the back of your eye. And that artery supplies blood and helps to grow and develop your lens. Well, after you're born, this artery disappears, but what remains is a canal. This is called the hyaloid canal, okay? It remains, and oftentimes the remnants of the artery float in here inside this small canal. Some people will get floaters as a result of this. Others get floaters in and around the vitreous body. So there's two different types of floaters. There's floaters in the canal, floaters in the body, in the vitreous body. So when Christ was talking about the plank and the speck, this is what he was talking about. He said, remove the plank from your eye. What, how does the verse go? And this, and this, when the speck is in your eye or something like that. And so what he was talking about is the speck is the remnant. Okay. That's the holy seed. There aren't that many that were, remain pure throughout time. 
we know of many that remain pure. Uh, Abraham, uh, Solomon, David, the whole bloodline of Christ remained pure. Noah, Adam, Seth, okay, Shem. These are all in the bloodline of Christ. This was the remnant passing through the Red Sea, right? Guys, this is fascinating stuff. I, I'm shocked at how, how this information has been quieted, okay? I really don't know how or why, but look, whoever needs to hear it is going to hear it. But as the Israelites passed through the Red Sea and God parted the Red Sea, you see how it's all right here? Uh, and then remember the Pharaoh came with his armies and then the sea closed back in. And this is like birth too because you have this umbilical cord. By the way, the hyloid artery is the same exact substance found in the umbilical cord of a child. It's called Wharton's jelly, W-H-A-R-T-O-N-S. They don't want this information out there, you guys. This is, this is the, some of the, this, nobody else is talking about this. It's the same substance, Wharton's jelly, in the artery of your eye as well as the umbilical cord. This is real. And this Wharton's, so basically, they passed through the Red Sea. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. Child gestates in the womb for 40 weeks. There's your analogy. It was birth. They were delivered like a child is delivered out of Egypt. They went through the Red Sea. They were born. Again, basically, remember all the heartache and problem they had to go through? They kept disobeying God. God wrote this in the Bible so we would know. Nobody knew what a hyaluronic canal was when Exodus was written. Think about that for a second. Who was dissecting eyes and seeing that there was a thin, you know, this little tiny, you kind of almost not see this. We know it now because we have microscopes. This is a very delicate structure. They might have popped an eye out of a head, but who sat there and dissected an eye open? They didn't even have scalpels back then. They were sitting there trying to survive and eat. They didn't have time to like dig around in human bodies to find all this stuff when the book of Exodus was written. So how did they know? Well, it was God pointing forward. He was pointing forward so that we could see. So here's our earth. So what is this? represent on earth. These are the tree stumps. This was the tree of life that used to connect us to heaven, but it got cut off. See these tree branches in here? And all these branches are full of fruit. What is that? Rods and cones, bipolar cells, ganglion. Those are all the structures along this wall, and they look like fruit. They look like figs, grapes, and pomegranates. So here's your tree of life full of fruit. This might even been the tree of the garden. We got cut off all the trees of the garden were cut off. There were many trees in the trees of the garden, but they all got cut off, right? Those are the tree stumps. And I hope this is making sense to everybody. I'm not crazy. I am just have time to think about all this stuff. And to me, this is the most fascinating information that you could ever see because it proves God. But this is what they don't want you to know. Okay, this is what they don't want you to know. So they're going to hide this information, right? So what else? Okay, so when God was talking, so when Jesus was talking about the speck in the beam, it directly relates to this. They call when the Bible calls God's seed a remnant, and uh, anatomy describes the hyaluronic canal remnants left over. They call it the same thing. See, this is also the narrow gate. It is the way <clears throat> back to heaven. It's a very narrow path is what it is. It's a narrow gate, one way, and that is through Christ. That's it. It's pretty simple. You know, the, all these religions came out and, you know, they're like, oh, we, you know, coexist and you should be able to believe what you want. At the end of the day, 
none of those religions ever encoded anything like this into their historical documents, okay? This is the proof of the one only true God and his son. And I'm not trying to down anyone's belief systems, but now you know why they don't want this information out there. Because if people knew this, they would go, whoa, so you're telling me that not only did this stuff really happen in the Bible, but through people following and obeying God's will and his command, they actually wrote themselves into the body code. They wrote themselves into the history of the inside of the body. And that to me is fascinating. It's amazing. And so what you have is you have solid proof of the creator who created our bodies and then wrote it all back, wrote it forward from the Bible so we would know before scalpel existed, before people were cutting up bodies to find out what was inside the human body. I mean, this is just, to me, this is like, you would think if someone was hearing this, they saw a live stream and they pulled this up, there'd be 2,000 people watching this right now. But sadly, not a lot of people care. And I don't get that. I do kind of get it, though. Algorithms, right? So what else? There's so much more. I'm just, I'm just glossing on the surface, okay? All this is included in the Body Code series. It's, it's a lot of watch time. But I guarantee you, you will be just fascinated. I mean, you'll never, ever doubt God again after you after you watch this stuff. Okay? You just won't. It's the most, most faith building. Sometimes I feel all alone. I feel like it's just you and me and 100 other people watching this. And I feel like the rest of the world doesn't care. And that makes me sad because everyone's so distracted with all the crap in this world. Um, what else is there? So that was a good question. Whoever asked that question about, um, oh, the spec or something like that. Somebody asked it. I love you guys. Thanks, Michael. I love all of you guys. Um, what else? This info isn't known by the masses for now. No, nobody knows it. Very few people know it. If you look at my playlist, I, I don't know if people think I'm just making all this up. You can't make all this up. Something would not fit, but everything fits, even down to the angle that it's at that matches the earth. Okay? It, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, I'll tell you, look, I'm not, I'm not going to come on here and bash other channels, okay? But I will tell you this. Don't you think it's interesting that once we discover these tree stumps, we were the ones that discovered the tree stumps, you guys. Make no mistake. We are already telling you that these structures all around the earth were cut off tree stumps. Then a channel came out. His video went viral where he showed he got more specific, and he went all around the world showing all these, these tree stumps, right? This was about two years ago. And then all of a sudden, this channel came out of nowhere. And started saying, those aren't tree stumps. They're ligaments. Okay? They're not ligaments. That's to make us all look crazy. Because that would mean something would have to be 17 miles tall. And there are different versions of the Book of Enoch. One of them says that these were really super, super tall giants. Another one says that there were doesn't say how tall they are. So you got to be careful. They're not ligaments. What, what would be the purpose of saying they're ligaments? Well, that takes the focus off of them being trees, which relates directly back to the Bible. Ezekiel 31 talks about giant trees that reach the heavens. So you got to be very careful with all this stuff out there, you guys. Um, I have a video. It's approaching 300,000 views. It talks about the trees in the book of Enoch and that they were all cut down. We found in the book of Enoch where it talks about all the trees being cut down or we, in, you could interpret it that way. It's not a slam dunk, but it's very interesting to look at it. Well, 
I'm getting that that uh, video is getting trolled hardcore. Oh, those aren't trees. Those are ligaments. Those are giants feet. And they're all pointing back to this one channel. Don't you think that's kind of weird that after we discovered that they were trees, all of a sudden this channel got super popular, with millions of subscribers. And this channel always stays at the bottom. Breaking discoveries. So I'm just, and I'm not criticizing that channel. They might believe that that's what they are. But do you, don't you think it's weird to have all these followers, all the support, all this reinforcement? I don't see a bunch of you guys on other people's channel going on and on about this stuff. It's not real. It's not natural. It seems like a bot is saying this over and over and over and over and over again. Every single day I get, um, this is a video that's been up for like two months. And every single day I've got comments from people saying, those aren't trees. Those are ligaments. Go to such and such channel. That's not real traffic. Real traffic is like, I'll be on other people's channels and watching and I'll see one or two of you every once in a while going, hey, have you guys checked out any of the stars? But it's pretty rare, to be honest with you. And so there's something going on. I think it's like a, these are bots or something. Because why would people believe that? Wouldn't it be easier to believe that they're tree stumps? They look a lot more like tree stumps than they do ligaments. I'll tell you that much. So there's something weird going on on YouTube. And who knows? But all I can do is wake up every day and try to show you guys the truth. All right. What else do we have? You know, this is it's a, it's a tried and true method to control for, of mind control to use subversion. I don't know how many times I've let somebody get close to me and then only to be betrayed or backstabbed. Okay. And so uh, this is their tactic. This is what they do. They infiltrate a movement by duplicating it. Uh, then they twist it a little bit to take the focus off of what the real truth is. And then they allow that to go viral because they control all the stuff. Uh, YouTube gets the memo. It says take off all the, the restrictions on such and such channel or such and such video. Send out all the notifications to all their subscribers every time they upload a video. And those are the ones that are allowed to pass through the glass ceiling. And this is this is this is proven throughout history. This is their tactic that they use. OK, I'm not making this up. And yes, it's here on YouTube. And then the the real information gets buried. It gets subverted. It gets twisted. And everyone's focus is on ligaments <laughs> instead of mount uh, instead of uh, actual tree stumps. OK, so. That's that. All right, I'm back in the chat. And the fact of the matter is, I don't even know for sure that they're tree stumps. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I know for a fact that they are. But that's just interesting. You see the trends. You see things that get popular on YouTube. And it seems like the more sensationalist stuff is the stuff get, that gets pushed and promoted. You know, I could do videos on fake suns and fake moons, those, those videos get lots and lots and lots of views. I could do video, every single video on flat earth. Those videos get lots and lots and lots of views. But at the end of the day, unless I can prove it or unless I have some very, very compelling evidence, I'm not going to push and promote that. What would be the purpose of why they would promote a fake sun and moon? Well, the purpose would be to discredit God because the Bible says that there was a sun and a moon. So if they're fake, that's automatically saying the Bible's fake. You got to be very careful what you believe in on YouTube. I mean, it's okay to like talk about stuff and go, what if, what if? But when you hang your hat on something and you believe it hands down and you're, you're totally brainwashed into believing that this is that or this is this, then you, you could be undermining your own faith. Got to be very careful.
So, all right. What else? What else? What else? Okay, yeah, we're back to skip not. What is it? What was the link you were trying to drop in here? Because I'll allow it. I just need to know what it is. Okay. Yeah, some people believe that they're sun simulators, but like I just said, you know, if you believe it's a sun simulator, then you believe that the sun isn't real and that God didn't really create a sun. And the Bible says in Genesis that he did create a sun and a, and a moon. We well, call them luminaries, but yeah, I mean, I don't know for a fact, but I'm just telling you, think about what the purpose is behind what's being said. Is this information coming from atheist channels that never mention God or don't believe in God? Ask them some direct questions. Ask them questions like, okay, if you believe there's a sun simulator, well, then how does that fit into the Bible? And then you might be shocked at the response you get. They might laugh at you and go, you still believe in the Bible? And then you know exactly where they stand. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about, you guys. Okay. And again, this isn't to attack other channels. I'm just saying you got to be very careful and ask questions and wait for a response. Okay, um, cool. Thank you, Skip. Not 15 members of Kane the hockey team were killed in an auto accident. Bringing the worst. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So go ahead and put that link in here. I'll, I'll allow it. I've just had people post crazy links. I've all, had all kinds of stuff happen on this channel. It's unbelievable the amount of trolling we get for the size of the channel that we are. It's because we go live a lot. It's because we have very compelling information. I'm sure this is grounds. Can't even say that word anymore. <laughs> For the government to come in here and try to disrupt stuff with bots and everything. So drop that link and I'll approve it. Yeah. You know, YouTube felt like there was some kind of a shift yesterday. I don't know if you guys noticed it. The format changed a little bit. It was weird. So I don't know. Yeah, see, Allie's getting blocked for posting. Uh, okay, let's approve. Oh, it looks like it went through this time. That's weird. Whoa. Allie was getting blocked from chats because she's putting in biblical stuff. I know for a fact uh some one of the youtubers went missing for a couple days not like i said i'm not going to be specific those of you that know know and i've seen people get blocked from there for talking about the bible those are channels you might want to unsubscribe to okay when someone's blocking you from talking about god and jesus they're part of the problem okay and now they'll, they'll say all kinds of stuff they'll say oh this isn't a religious channel Get off of here. We don't want religious fighting in here. Don't come in here with your Jesus stuff. They'll start that stuff, right? Make it look like they're just trying to be neutral. But there's a time coming where, hey, if you're on the fence, that's not a very good place to be. So if a channel's blocking you for saying you love Jesus, uh, hello. Come on, guys. You guys are smart people. You got to focus on what you're supposed to be focused on and not chasing after the cult of personalities or trying to be part of something on some of these channels, okay? Because that's going to get you into trouble. It's going to get you frustrated. It's like chasing after a girl that doesn't like you. All men have done this before, right? Chase, chase, chase. Oh, maybe if I buy her flowers, maybe if I do this, maybe if I do that. And at the end of the day, she's just not into you. You got to cut your losses. That was one of the first lessons I learned as a young man. You can spend your whole life being in love with somebody who doesn't even know you exist. <laughs> and it's like some of these YouTube channels. You know, people, I'm shocked at what people will put up with on a YouTube channel. They go to the channel, they'll get blocked, then they'll complain, why did you block me? Um... <laughs> It's unbelievable. Or they'll sit and hear somebody say they don't believe in God. They'll still follow the channel. Or all the actions of the channel, they might say they believe in God, but then everything they're doing has nothing to do with the Bible or God. In fact, a lot of the stuff they're doing is contradictory to what the Bible says, tells us to do in the last days. And people still follow because it's the cult of personality, right? 
So I don't know. I don't get it. But it is what it is. We're all individuals. You all get to make your own choices at the end of the day. So I'll come back down to you. All I can do is tell you what the deal is. So, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, the line crossing out thing, Jennifer Messenger. Yeah, I've seen that. I don't know what causes that. I don't think it's the channel doing that. Something in the in the YouTube stuff, the algorithms actually crosses out parts of people's message as if people can't read through it. But it's just weird. It's kind of creepy. And I don't know what causes that. So <clears throat> what else? Yeah. Yeah, nothing works right anymore, cartoon, ball. Well, I appreciate you guys behaving tonight. It means the world to me. It makes my life much easier. <laughs> um, oh, we got our first eggs from the new chicks. They're very dark, which is really cool, and they're smaller. That's how I know that they're different because the big girls, they lay big eggs. Sometimes they come out with double yolks. And um, the little, the new ones are just started laying and it's funny because the neighbor he's like he said that they'll start laying in april and here we are in april and they start laying i don't know how he knew that but sure enough he did so now i've got my chickens firing on all cylinders now i got eggs i don't think i'm gonna have to go to the store and buy eggs anymore and I had a funny incident yesterday <laughs> i'll tell you guys about i wish i would have got it on camera but basically these two girls, the two little ones, did not want to come back in for the night. And I have to put them away at night. Otherwise, they could get eaten by like a fox or an eagle or there's all kinds of like predators cruising around out in the out in the forest, right? That would love to have some chicken dinner, right? So basically, I had the two big girls in the fenced area and I couldn't get the little ones. And, but I can pick them up. One of them's easy to pick up. The other one's getting a little feisty. So I have to chase her all around. Her wings aren't clipped. And so I I grab one of them and I put her inside the fenced area and I go to grab the other one and I turn around and freaking Rue is on top of this chick hitting her in the head again, pecking her again, probably because I grabbed Probably because I dropped her in, and she really was like, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reestablish my pecking order." And I haven't seen them peck in like weeks, so <clears throat> I was a little concerned. So she's pecking. Rue starts pecking Ninja on the head, and here comes Star. And Star jumped on top of Rue and started pecking her in the back of the head. So apparently. Rue is at the top of the pecking order. I mean, I'm sorry. Star is at the top of the pecking order. Star is the beige one, the lighter one. That's why I call her Star because he's, she's uh, lighter, complected. And um, I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, okay, so what's going on here? Is Star defending the new hen or is Star taking this opportunity while Rue is distracted to establish her pecking order? Like, what's really going on? Like, I'd like to... Get inside the mind of a chicken, right? I was like, that's kind of cool. Like, stars sticking up. <laughs> it's kind of like us here. Like, enter the stars, right? We stick up for everybody who's tread underfoot by the matrix, the new world order, and all these rules and taxes and unfairness and taking our rights away from fishing and all this other crap, right? And it was like star was protecting the, the ninja, the hen. Well, then, no sooner I turned around, this all went down. And then I went to grab the other chicken. It was kind of over. And Ninja does a ninja move and flies up onto the fence. It was like three feet high. And she's standing there, perched at the top of the fence. Now, Rue and Star are too fat to, like, fly anymore. They're, like, really fat now. They look like turkeys almost. 
so they don't really fly over fences anymore. But Ninja and uh, Lee, they are young, so they just whip up there, and they're kind of skinny. I'm trying to fatten them up. I don't think they have much food, and they were getting pecked so hard they were borderline starvation. But now they're eating regularly, so that's good. I check their poop to make sure that their droppings are healthy and everything, and they're good. They're getting enough water. So Ninja flies on top of the fence. I'm like, Ninja, please get back in the fenced area. I'm trying to get you guys in for the night. This went on for 15 minutes. I was exhausted. It was like in that uh, Rocky movie where – they put him in the chicken pen. He's got to he's got to catch the chickens as part of his like boxing training. This is what it was like. So I grab Ninja. Oh no, Ninja flies off on, in back into the outside of the fence area. Now I got two chickens outside. I'm like, oh brother. Okay, what am I gonna do now? Tried the jiggle the food trick. So you take you take I take the can. I shake it around and. Rue and Star, they just went for that. They were good. They're like, ooh, food. And they would just follow me wherever I went. I was like the Pied Piper. So I would just shake the food and they'd come in. But these two new chickens, I don't know what it, the deal is with them. They're not trained yet. So now I got to train them to follow the shaking food to make my job easier. So I, they all just come in. And I think it has a little bit to do with um, the new chicks are, even though they're not getting pecked actively anymore, they're a little, they don't follow the big chicks anymore because, or they don't, they never did because um, they're afraid of them still. So the, it's hard to get them in a group to move around together. And so um, basically that's my problem. I got two groups of chickens. So it's like herding chickens, herding cats. It's the same thing. So finally I grabbed this long rake. And I, it's basically like I've got this two long arms, and that's the only way I've found to get them back into the fenced area. I just put the rake out to the right, and I move my body to the left and kind of corral them back in through the little gate and the narrow gate, right? <laughs> Getting the chicks through the narrow gate. So um, that's the story with that. So... Yeah, I had a little episode there. <laughs> but the fishing trip went really well. We went fishing. I went fishing by myself. And um, it, was, uh, it was crazy. There's chemtrails all over the skies. And there was like a sun dog. Some of you believe there's a second sun or sun simulator. I understand that. And um, so that's what it might have looked like. But it did look like a second sun. It really did. You know, um, it was crazy. And I basically got some footage of that. But some, someone was telling me you need like a filter, a better filter on that camera to, to so that you can actually see what you're looking at. Because the light of the sun overpowers the lens and you, you can't really see it. But with my eyes, I could see it clearly. It was crazy. It looked like a rainbow almost. A small rainbow piece of a rainbow or something. So, um... Yeah, that's what's going on with that. There's Alley, Logic Before Authority. Hey, did you get your channel back? Um, that'd be cool. Yeah, I went on a fishing trip. It was two hour drive, 130 kilometers an hour is the speed limit on these main highways out here. I think that's pretty fast. I think it's like 85 miles an hour. So um, I don't know if someone wants to do the conversion on that. But uh yeah, I was flying down the highway and got to the fishy spot. It was pretty beautiful. And basically at that point, I was uh, tried three different spots and came up short. Thought I had a bite, but there was no bite. Thought I had a bite. But some people made some good comments, some trout fishermen. They're like, you got to keep the bait moving. I understand that. I was pretty much trying to scout. And sometimes when you're scouting, you're not actively fishing. You're kind of putting bait out to see if there's anything alive. And a, a worm that's alive, that's moving around, even if it's in the back eddies or still, if there's any fish in there, something's going to eat it. Something's going to bite it. And once you know fish are there, then you pull out the fly rods. 
but the fly fly rods are a whole different dimension of fishing. Like you have to change gears. Okay. You got this long rod, you're going through tree branches and, you know, thorns and all this stuff. And you've got to get in the fly rod mode. You're dealing with very small flies. You can barely see some of them. You're tying them and it's all new, different gear and tackle. So I didn't want to switch gears unless it was absolutely necessary. So I sat at each spot, put out these worms, and something should have bit it. An eel, something. But it's like, it's weird. It's like, is there anything alive in some of these rivers and streams? So I did some research, and I found out that maybe it's the wrong time of year. Um, there is a spring migration, but most for the most part, salmon and trout are very active in, like, unless they're actively stocked, um, they're, they're like, like when I was in, um, when I was in the Sierra Nevada fishing the McClellan river, and those fishing videos, and I, there was big, beautiful German bound trout. I mean, these things were almost two feet long. Those were actively stocked German brown trout that were stuck in a stretch of river that never got overfished. And that's why there were so much, so much abundance there. But if they're, if they're not actively stocking these fish, they're just not going to really exist. You know, they're not going to be, there's not going to be an abundance of them, especially if they're landlocked in any way, shape or form, they just get fished out and then the game over. Right. So, um, basically that's the deal with fishing in France. So I guess September, October, November is when they do their winter run. And that is the major migration of salmon and German brown trout in the rivers that have access to the ocean. So that's when you get them. But then when they're spawning, they're hard to catch. <laughs> it's like a no-win situation. So that's the story. <laughs> Catfish. Yeah, they have like, I guess what they're called. Actually, there's an abundance of carp in France. Hey, if you want to eat carp, want to catch a giant carp, Got plenty of those. Um, and believe it or not, it, like if you look up in the Sierra Nevada mountains, uh, all of those carp up there, you know, like if you're on the Kern River, I remember I couldn't keep carp off of my line. They were so annoying because I wanted to catch a trout. You throw out a worm, you're going to attract carp. And there's a lot more carp than there are trout. Well, I found out that carp in the Sierra Nevada mountains, foothills and streams and rivers, are not, they are not native. They were brought there by the gold rush people. The settlers came in, they stocked all these rivers and streams with carp. Okay. And the reason why they did this is because for a food source. So apparently these carp were a food source. And if you think about it, like if you eat a carp, which is a legal fish to eat because it has scales and fins, Okay, so they're actually okay biblically to eat one. Um, they they're actually pretty good to eat. The problem is they got so many bones, so they're kind of seen as a trash fish, and they have mouths that suck on the bottom of, so they're kind of like mud suckers, right? Sucker fish too. They have a lot of sucker fish. Yeah, if you research uh, carp, sucker fish, um, all those came after the gold rush. In California, that's when they that's where they stock those fish in there. So, in America, carp and sucker fish are seen as trash fish. Nobody eats those. I mean, unless you're like dirt broke and poor, and uh, <clears throat> or you know, I know some Asian people like like sucker fish and carp. They'll eat them. I remember um, I caught a carp. I was at Kachuma Lake pulled it out this thing was huge it was almost three feet long and pulled it out of the water and um i was ready to throw it back a lot of people will kill them that's how <clears throat> that's how um unwanted carp are i mean there's lakes like the kachuma lake in california near santa barbara they actually have bow hunting it's legal you can go in fact some lakes will pay you how many carcasses you bring back uh, to bow hunt and kill these carp. Now, I won't do that because I don't like to just indiscriminately kill something unless I'm going to eat it. But 
they have these uh they bow hunt these carp and just kill them indiscriminately and this is allowed this is why it cracks me up you know these some of these um <laughs> it's just so good <laughs> yeah <laughs> jesse james that's pretty funny um so it's uh this is funny because you know these santa barbara is a huge liberal community you know they're all about conservation and there's a lot of a lot of vegetarians there and you know and don't kill anything and it's 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 a very it's a city of hypocrisy is what it is you've got all these oil fields right off the coast okay which increased by the way under obama during obama presidency the number of oil rigs off the coast of santa barbara increase it like double or triple nobody cares because it's not about what someone's really doing right it's about it's about the label oh he's a liberal so we like him no matter what he does right but during the obama presidency we had like a doubling or tripling of the oil rigs off the coast of santa barbara and then things like what you see at kachuma lake where they just allow you just to kill creatures indiscriminately without even using them for anything it's just hypocrisy this is why I don't sign up for labels anymore because the people are doing the exact opposite of what they're supposed to do. So that's what's going on with carp. So anyway, in America, carp and suckerfish are seen as a trash fish. Well, here in France, <laughs> everything's backwards. <laughs> people love carp fishing out here. It's like they probably rather catch a carp than they would a salmon, to be honest with you. I mean, there's pictures. If you go on and look at here, let's look at France. Let's let's look at some pictures. I know you guys like to look at pictures. Okay, this is crazy. You guys have heard of the whales catfish, right? Everybody watch River Monsters. Well, they have, France has its own version of this. Not quite as big, but look at some of these pictures. This is what people love to do in France. This is like the pinnacle of fishing. Look at the size of these things. I mean, this is unreal. Let's flip through some of these pictures. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look at these things. And the people love this stuff. I don't know if they eat them or they return them. Look, here's my deal. I'm part Native American. I don't have a lot of Native American in me. But something in me is connected to the earth. And if I'm going to spend $100 to go fishing through licensing, fuel, food, you know, everything you got to bring to to actually, you know, catch a fish. It's not easy to catch a fish. It requires a lot of time. You're out in the sun. You're expending a lot of energy. Okay. Look at the size of some of these fish. And I'm going to eat it. That's the whole purpose. That's what Native Americans did. They caught fish to feed people. So I'm not a really a catch and release fisherman. I'm just not. But I'm not a wasteful fisherman either. I catch what I know I'm going to eat. I use the entire animal. I return the bones back to the earth. They recycle. This is what we're here to do. It's called recycling. And I thought about doing a video on, um, it's going to be called vegetable cruelty, <laughs> where I take like tomatoes and I like smash them like very cruelly about, instead of slicing them nice and friendly. And tomatoes have feelings too. Or I like squish a banana through my fingers and call it vegetable cruelty because I'm just tired. Everything, every living thing has energy. Okay. This fish has an energy in it, as well as vegetables. Everything has energy, okay? And not that we should just go and just be cruel to something or waste the creature. The creatures were put here for us to consume. We're part of a biological system of birth, growth, renewal, and death. The only way to survive is to consume things. This is the curse we're under. This is why Jesus didn't think twice about throwing a net over the boat and catching 153 fish that all ended up dying in a net. Okay. 
So, <laughs> sometimes I just get like, what? <laughs> All right, back to the chat. What's going on with you guys? So, uh, it's connected. <laughs> Yeah, vegetable uh, cruelty we're going to do. I'm going to squish bananas through my fingers and make like screaming sounds. Ah! <laughs> Banana cries out as it was cut off of its vine from its mother plant. <laughs> I, and I'm not trying to be in, I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm just trying to pe get people to think logically, okay? Just try to use common sense sometimes. And I know I don't like to see an animal being hurt. But some people go overboard. And they won't touch anything with animal meat in it. And you, get, you know, it's like, what? It's definitely the same thing, Allie. It's absolutely the same thing. Everything has energy in it. Oh, the tomato has life energy in it. Just like... We're all based off of the sun. I mean, it's okay to disagree, but it's the, it's the truth. To try to differentiate an animal from a plant is that's that's just not true. And basically, you're calling into question Jesus's own actions. And when you start doing that. When you start doubting the Savior for killing a fish, that's when you get into ground that's pretty shaky. Uh, they, they do have heart, brain, lungs. They have all that, just in a different manner. And I respect people's right to not eat animals. That's fine. But where I get, where when it starts reflecting back and people start challenging, you know, Christ himself who killed lots of fish, um that's where it gets into like ground that i feel is like misleading other people yeah they have <laughs> there's plants that attack and kill other plants there's plants that eat flies so is that should we kill all the venus fly traps because they cruelly kill a fly i mean there, there's all kinds of analogies that you can make you know to show what the real deal is but it is what it is. So, yeah. Plants have feelings. A Venus flytrap is a plant. What if, okay, so what if people in the Amazon eat Venus flytraps? Okay. This plant has feelings. When a fly flies into it, it eats the fly. I mean, this thing looks like it's an animal. But would someone then make the stretch and go, wow, you shouldn't eat a Venus flytrap because it's acting like an animal. <laughs> It, but it's a plant. You see where this, there's this gray area? All things have life force in them, plants and animals. Anything that God created that grows and dies has a life force in it. It doesn't really matter which ones you're eating as long as it's clean and unclean. And even then, I don't feel like there's any hard rules about that. Like you're not going to not get to heaven because you ate unclean meats. I just think these are like health suggestions or whatever. Now, I do believe in energy of things. And through prayer, when you pray over something and you kill it humanely, okay, and you don't waste it, I think those are all positive things, whether plants or animals. But anyway, I don't know how we got on that topic, but maybe because we're talking about fishing, right? Some people are automatically turned off when anytime someone talks about fishing. Now, here's what I don't understand. Here's the backward nature of this world. Okay. There's all these fishing channels. Many of them I watch because I like to enjoy watching fishing. But then something, something became very clear to me. A lot of these sport fishing channels that fish for bass, like what are they doing? So they're cruising around and they're hooking all these fish which can't feel good. And then they don't eat the fish. They throw it back. And they do this all day long. And I'm like, this is kind of getting boring. I'd like to see someone like actually cook and clean this fish and feed people with it. There's a lot of people starving. And you're in your $100,000 bass boat and uh, catching or releasing fish. 
burning through thousands of dollars every single trip that you go on. And again, I'm not criticizing the people in the bass boats who do this, who have millions of subscribers who watch all their videos. What I'm saying is think of the hypocrisy of that. And the fact that, look, <laughs> there's people starving. You might be better off pulling those fish out and like taking like five or 10 of them and drive to the hood and drop them off. People be love to have some fried bass, but it's political correctness. Somehow we got to a point in the society where if you do that, you're a bad man. Right. I'll never forget my buddy and I years ago, we were up at Santa Margarita Lake and we were, we caught a bunch of bass, right? Kind of like six or seven of them. They were huge. It was funny because they're having a bass tournament with boats and everything on the lake at the time we caught all these bass now of course all the bass fishermen throw them back well that particular day uh <laughs> we caught so we caught more bass we actually won the tournament even though we were on land we were just cruising around on land we we added up all the poundage of the bass we caught and we actually outperformed the bass fishermen. We would have won the bass contest if we were in the boat in the contest. So on the way out, we showed the uh, lady our catch. And even though it was perfectly legal, we got the stink eye. And then, so she put these bass up on the website. It might even still be up there. See my friend holding up all these bass, Santa Margarita Lake. And, uh, <laughs> so all these comments people are like you should be ashamed of yourself <laughs> I'm like what are you talking about it's not like we just threw these tr fish in the trash can we like ate them like, it's this is where we've gotten to in our culture people are willing to starve and it's because of abundance it's called decadence you guys native americans would be laughing at us right now they expended so much energy to even survive to eat to, to catch something and throw it back, that's like an abomination. Or to waste it, they would just be laughing. We have the luxury of thinking that way because of the decadence that we live in now. Because we have internet connection and we have nice warm homes. And we have, and in the winter we can, you know, we stay warm. And in the summer we stay cool with our air conditioning we have vehicles that drive around, and if we're hungry, we just go to the store. Because of the decadence, we have the luxury of having all these weird ideas about animals and plants. So, someone's trolling here, huh? Nice. I can't even see that. I probably did not include even the last fish. Fool. Fool. <laughs> all right <laughs> we'll, let, we'll let her stand on that or he or him or whatever <laughs> here's the problem okay problem is not fishermen the problem is commercial fishermen who think about this when you catch 500 fish 20 percent of those are going to get wasted and they're never going to make it to the store then they're going to sit on a store shelf and then only about 50% of those are actually going to get bought because everyone wants fresh fish, right? So commercial fishing wastes about 70, 70 to 60 to 70% of the fish get wasted before they even reach the dinner table. Now you tell me what the real problem is. A guy who goes out and catches two or three fish to feed his family and all the work and money he had to spend to do it, he's not going to waste that fish. It's going The two that he doesn't eat today are going to go in the freezer. And then the one he's going to eat fresh. You see how this works? You don't have the waste. But they're penalizing the little guy who wants to catch two or three fish for his first family. What they really should be doing is say, you know what? The reason why the fish are about to go extinct is because all these huge boats out there bringing all these fish to market and wasting 80% of them. That's the, the impact on, the, on nature. It's not the guy who wants to go out and catch a couple fish. I never did understand that with these rules, okay, that penalize the little guy, the in the Native American who wants to just catch some food. What should be illegal is catching a bunch of stuff, 
from God's nature and trying to upsell it and sell it to other people. That should be illegal. Why do we do it? Why do we allow it for convenience? So we can all go to the store. So we cannot have to be part of nature anymore. We can just go buy it. Even knowing that 60% of it was wasted, we still go and buy it. You see how everything's backwards in this reality? And people just buy it, hook, line, and sinker. Why would you want to eat a fish? They're not a sustainable resource. The reason why they're not, you need to go talk to the corporations. That's the ones that are not that are causing this unsustainability. So that we can all have the nice convenience of walking down to the store and getting our pretty little seafood. I'd rather go catch the food myself. Then at least it means something. Then I, then I don't have a middleman standing in between me and my fish. I want to have free will to be connected to nature. Everything's so backwards and everyone's so deceived about this stuff. And I know I'm, uh, this devolved into a rant, but this stuff needs to be said, you guys. Yes, Darius, they want to control you over the food. That's what this is all about. That's what it's always been about. I don't want people hunting. I don't want you to... I mean, I'm just I'm shocked they even let people kill deer anymore. But you know, Bambi was a psyop. That was to get people to it was to personify animals so that people so that oh you're the bad hunter. But that didn't work. <laughs> but you'll notice as soon as you tell someone you're a hunter, you're in a different club. You're not gonna have certain friends. Definitely liberals, they're not they're gonna hate your guts. Why do you have to hunt? Just leave the deer alone. Let them run free. If you want to buy food, just go buy it. You know, shocking what people will believe. So, you know, I want to be free. I mean, there's you guys, there's a whole army. You guys have heard me talk about this before. There's a whole army of fishing game all over the United States. Every single state has an army. I mean, these guys are serious business. Millions of dollars. Budgets with equipment, boats, drones, radar, glocks, shotguns, trucks, laptops, gear, bulletproof, bulletproof vests, laws allowing them to search and seizure, armies of these guys. They can spot you 17 miles away with a scope running around up in these hills and mountains harassing people who are just trying to get some food and have a little fun. It's not like they're in Africa killing a whole elephant for a tusk. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this is America's free. No, they're not free. Okay. Deer and hog have overrun much of the South. All up the eastern seaboard. They have so many deer they don't even know what to do with. Running all around. Deer are never going to go extinct off of a, a person killing a deer for food. Okay, Even if every single person hunted on the eastern seaboard and caught... Because a deer has a lot of meat on it. And you put it in the freezer. And it'll last you like a whole year. You don't need to kill 500 deer. You kill one or two in the season. That's it. But we've been brainwashed. Bambi, don't kill anything. Well, like I said. Ah, man. Crazy. There's Richard. Richard's in the house. Thanks, Richard. Richard has a mod wrench. <laughs> I think I modded you like a long time ago. Oh, Run to Christ lost his channel. So you guys sub to him. His backup channel. I think his backup channel is Run to Christ Live. I haven't heard from him. A little concerned. He got to put a lot of work into his channel. So he's gone. A lot of work. That guy does twice as much work as I do on my videos. He's talented and he lost his channel. So welcome to YouTube, right? <sighs> yeah. Moment of silence for a run to Christ. Um, thoughts on Essene Gospel. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about. That's a much more recent 
you know, they call it a gospel, right? <laughs> because that helps legitimize it. And I, th I think I know what you're talking about, but basically it tries to say Jesus was a vegetarian and some stuff like that. Someone sent me that about two months ago. They were like, really, really wanted me to, you know, look into that. And I started reading it. And as far as I can tell, there's no proof that any of it goes back. The writings go back any further than a couple hundred years. So it's relatively recent. And it just says pretty much everything it says contradicts Jesus. I mean, if Jesus killed fish then and fed them to people, then how could he have been a vegetarian? Like the, the two do not jive. Basically, it contradicts the Bible. I think that's what you're talking about. If I'm wrong, I stand corrected. But yeah. So the way you spell run to Christ, it says run to Christ. I think the channel is, is new, is the backup channel is live, but run to Christ live, but there's not many subscribers over there. So that concerns me. Um, but it's weird. YouTube's got some weird algorithm. And uh, it's crazy because I see people with huge channels and then they do a backup channel and their backup channel maybe has 20% of how many subscribers they had. And all those people didn't disappear. So you got to wonder, what is, what is going on with YouTube? How are they doing this? So... Um, I just prayers go out to him. All right. So, yeah. All right. Okay, I guess I'll pop off here. I know it's late, guys. I kind of got started late. It's already very, very late for many of you guys. I'm going to let you guys get your beauty sleep. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Much love to everybody. Take care and be safe.